If you're enjoying this podcast from us here at Witch, then why not become a Witch member? Right now, we've got a special offer, especially for podcast listeners, meaning you can choose any of our three membership tiers for 50% off the usual price. Starting at just £39.50 for a full year, you can get Witch Magazine delivered direct to your door. For the same price, you could also choose a digital Witch subscription, giving you access to all of our product reviews, the Witch app, and the digital edition of Witch Magazine. What's more, you'll also be able to use the Ask Witch service for personalised one-to-one buying advice. Or why not get a full access Witch subscription for just £49.50 for a full year. Don't forget, that's 50% off the usual price. To join Witch or to find out more, just head to witch.co.uk forward slash podcast offer. That's witch.co.uk forward slash podcast offer. Or click the link in the description for today's podcast for 50% off a Witch annual subscription. Hello and welcome to the Witch Short Podcast. I'm James Rowe. This is the podcast that brings you the very best from Witch with a weekly taster of some of the brilliant journalism you can expect from your suite of magazines. This week we're looking at deepfakes. In the August edition of the Witch Tech magazine, James O'Malley investigated the way that artificial intelligence can be used to create fake images, videos and audio of real people that can be used to trick you. Here's his piece, adapted for the podcast, read by Romana Yassin. It was four months after Russia had begun its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, when the then mayor of Berlin, Franziska Giffey, joined a video conference with her Kiev counterpart, the former professional boxer turned mayor, Vitaly Klitschko. For the first 15 minutes, the meeting proceeded normally, with discussions focused on how the German capital was handling the influx of Ukrainian refugees. But then it took an unusual turn, as Klitschko began asking about welfare payments and even whether Berlin could help Kiev host a gay pride parade. A nice thing to do for sure, but definitely an unusual request, given that the city was still reeling from its near capitulation to Russia's war machine. It was at this point that the Berlin mayor and her advisers realised that something strange was happening and cut the call short. They quickly determined that the figure speaking on the screen in front of them was not the mayor of Kiev at all, even though he sounded and looked like him. They determined that the man on the screen was a digital imposter, a so-called deep fake. This is the name given to a new phenomenon that has emerged with the rise of artificial intelligence, or AI, and machine learning. In a nutshell, a deep fake is a fabricated video or audio recording that doesn't require the work of a Hollywood special effects studio or even any digital editing skills on the part of the creator. Instead, AI deep learning algorithms do the hard work, seamlessly superimposing faces onto other bodies, or replicating voices to make the subject say or do whatever the creator wants. Unsurprisingly, although there are some positive uses for the technology, most of the world's focus has been on the harm since deepfakes first emerged around 2018. We've spent years saying that seeing is believing, says Jake Moore, global cybersecurity advisor for ESET. We're having to flip that completely on its head and tell people that seeing isn't believing anymore. The technology to make deep fakes is widely available today. You don't have to click too far to find, for example, clips of the actor Nicolas Cage superimposed onto other actors, or TikTok videos of what appears to be Tom Cruise dancing. In fact, the tech was already mainstream in 2020 when Channel 4, for its annual Alternative Christmas Message broadcast, created a clip of the Queen warning about the technology and using words that she didn't authorise or say herself. Since then, more sinister examples of deepfakes have spread across social media. Earlier this year, an inflammatory deepfake audio recording of Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, set X, formerly Twitter, alight. In the clip, the mayor is heard disparaging Remembrance Day. Were it real, this sentiment would have been incendiary. The mayor himself said that, had it spread unchallenged, the deepfake could have led to serious disorder. And it's perhaps in the potential for misinformation where fear of deepfakes is greatest. AI technology has democratised the creation of misinformation, meaning it's easier now for people to fake images, says Lorena Martinez, head of editorial operations at the fact-checking organisation Logically Facts. 
Before, if you wanted to manipulate a photo, you had to be good at Photoshop. You needed to spend hours learning how to use it. But now with AI, it just takes a couple of seconds to create something, and something that looks really good. So, exactly how easy are deepfakes to create, and how worried should we be about them? The way that video deepfake software works is by training an AI model with something real. If you show the AI a source video that you want to manipulate, a clip of a politician giving a speech for example, it will crunch through the data analysing how the face looks when it makes different sounds and expressions. Then, once you provide some new audio, a new speech saying whatever controversial thing you like, it will use the model it has built to animate the face to match the new sound. Audio deepfakes work in a similar way, and some of the most sophisticated AI machines only need the shortest of reference clips in order to create a realistic copy of the voice. For example, there are online tools that only need a few seconds of you speaking, and it's suddenly possible to manipulate not just what's being said, but the accent, tone and emotion in your voice too. And what's slightly scary is that you don't need a supercomputer or any particularly sophisticated hardware to do this. A typical desktop PC is more than capable of crunching through the data fast enough to create a serviceable deepfake in a matter of minutes. A couple of years ago you would have said creating a deepfake is possible, but in reality it's expensive to do and it's time consuming, says David M, principal security researcher at cybersecurity firm Kaspersky. But I think increasingly we're getting to a point now where it's relatively cheap to do, the technology is there. Today you don't even really need a computer. While it isn't quite possible to create deepfakes using the chips in our phones yet, it's more than possible in the cloud, and services exist whereby you can upload a reference clip and it will then spit out a deepfake manipulation. The most predictable consequence of deepfakes, given that they enable you to seamlessly put words in someone else's mouth, is that they are already being used in scams and for other assorted trickery. They are looking so good these days that they can fool most people, says cybersecurity expert Jake Moore. He has seen up close just how difficult it can be to spot a deep fake by successfully fooling his mum into thinking a deep fake video he made of himself was really him speaking. She couldn't get her head around the fact that I had made this completely out of another video, he says. As it's now quicker and easier to create deep fakes, it's perhaps unsurprising they have already been used by criminals to improve the existing phishing methods. We've been toying with social engineering for a long time, says Moore, pointing to attacks where a fake phone call or text message tries to persuade unsuspecting victims to hand over sensitive information or send money. Deep fakes, unfortunately, take these attacks to a new level, even being used to trick people into handing over passwords and bank details. They try and make you believe that you're speaking to who they are purporting to be, so you let your guard down, he says. We're now seeing deep fakes being used for a very targeted approach, you still do need some audio and visual data to start with to create those deepfakes, but the time it takes to make them is falling weakly. And the technology is evolving fast and improving incrementally. For example, early deepfakes were identifiable because the fake faces didn't blink, but the AI models improved and now they're much more lifelike. It's not hard to imagine a potential nightmare future where deepfakes exist everywhere. If the technology becomes good enough and easy to use, Unless we do something, we could find ourselves in a world where we can't know for certain whether anything we see online is truly real or not. However, the good news is that we still have some time to prepare ourselves. As things stand, even the best deepfakes share flaws that give them away to the trained observer. Currently, deepfakes look extremely good, says Moore, but there can often be a noticeable flaw. An odd strange head movement, maybe blurred parts of the face or the corners of the video, strange background movements behind where the head might be moving, or even some audio sync issues. But I think this technology is always advancing, so distinguishing between them is going to get a lot harder as time goes on. And that's where a number of software efforts come in. For example, at the end of last year, Canon, Nikon and Sony announced a joint cross-industry effort to embed digital signatures in photos taken with the cameras they manufacture. This means that, in theory, it should be possible to confirm whether or not a given photo really was taken with a camera, as opposed to generated using AI. This ability to create an audit trail and trace photos back to their source will likely become an increasingly common defence. But other companies have taken a different approach, exploring whether AI might be not just the problem, but also the solution. For example, Intel, a multinational tech firm, has announced its fake capture tool, which analyses the landmarks on our faces for consistency and carefully examines the subtle changes in the colour of blood vessels under our skin, something that deepfake software doesn't yet reliably emulate.
Using these techniques, Fake Catcher can spot deep fakes 96% of the time, according to the company researchers. It could mean that, in future, it will be possible for apps such as the communications platform service Zoom to display a warning if its system detects that the person we're speaking to isn't an authentic human. However, as clever as software can be, there is still one problem. Just as deepfake detection software can get better, so can deepfake creation software. This means that the dynamic is a little like the Cold War arms race, where both sides worked hard to improve their weapons and one-up the other side. So, what can you do? Perhaps the best protection against deepfakes isn't necessarily technological, but psychological. And this is best explained with a different Cold War metaphor. It's about developing an informed paranoia, M says. He likens the situation to when, even if America and Russia wanted to reduce their nuclear arsenals, it was hard to do so because they couldn't tell whether their adversaries would reciprocate. Reagan was fond of quoting the Russian proverb, trust but verify, M says. We should trust, but we also need a verification process. In his view, the best way to combat deep fakes isn't through technological means, but by training ourselves to be vigilant and sceptical, until we have evidence that the unknown caller or the social media video is really who they say they are. Moore agrees that this is ultimately the best defence. Thinking back to how he fooled his own mother, if deep fakes can convince our nearest and dearest, then we're moving to a stage where we have to bring in an approach I call zero trust, where we don't trust everything at face value. No pun intended. Romana Yassin was reading that article by James O'Malley, originally published in the August edition of the Witch Tech magazine. To read it in full, then be sure to become a member of Witch Tech. I'll pop a link in the show notes for you to find out more. You can also see our videos on Instagram and TikTok to find out more about how to spot a deep fake. We'll be back next week for another episode of Witch Shorts, but in the meantime, why not check out Witch Money Shorts on the Witch Money podcast feed. Every fortnight, we give you a taster of the Witch Money magazine, just like we do here on Witch Shorts with the travel, gardening, tech and the regular Witch magazine. Just search Witch Money wherever you're listening. Witch Shorts was produced and edited by me, James Rowe, while the exec producer was Grace Farrell. As well as being an expert on money matters, did you know that Witch also has a team of experts in various aspects of UK law? The Witch Legal Advice Service gives its members access to this team, allowing them to get advice on a range of legal matters that impact consumers' everyday lives. And right now, you can join the Witch Legal Advice Service and save 30% off the usual annual price. So whether it's a rental dispute, a last minute holiday cancellation, or legal employment advice, which can give you personalized one-to-one advice in a simple, convenient, and affordable manner. Don't struggle in silence or suffer the stress of wading through endless streams of online information from unreliable sources. Join online and book your appointment to speak to one of our experts to get the advice and guidance you need tailored to you. Plus, right now, you can join and get legal support from Witch for a whole year for just £69.30, a saving of 30%. Just go to witch.co.uk forward slash legal advice to find out more or click the link in the podcast show notes. This offer ends on the 31st of August, so don't miss out.